All right. Oh, back up here. There we go. So birding in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, if you've ever been up here before, if you're, uh, you live up here, you'll know that there is some fantastic birding that takes place right in Sault Ste. Marie and within the general Sault Ste. Marie area as well. Um, this is actually the same great horned, great horned owl that I saw this morning. I uh, decided to throw it into my presentation last minute. Um, he looks pretty angry there, but I think great horned owls always look angry. So he was more concerned about all the crows that were mobbing him rather than my presence. So Sault Ste. Marie birding area. This is a big circle that is centered on the Canada and U.S. border on the International Bridge, which connects Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan to Sault Ste. Marie, Canada. Um, and the circle itself has a 50 mile radius. So it's, it's pretty big. Um, to date, 367 species have been recorded within the circle, which is a really, really impressive number for um, where we're located. Um, considering the Algoma district has um, as a whole, which is much, much larger than the circle, has only recorded about 340-ish species. So, um, um, where we are includes um, Lake Superior, Lake Huron, and Lake Michigan. We're kind of at where all three lakes meet. Um, the St. Mary's River connects Lake Superior to Lake Huron, and then just a bit further south, the Mackinac Straits connect Lake Huron to Lake Michigan. So there's a lot of good waterways, a lot of ducks migrating through, um, that kind of thing. So on the Ontario side of the Sault Ste. Marie Birding Circle, it includes the Algoma District. But on the U.S. side, it includes Chippewa County, Mackinac County, and Luce County as well. So here's a map that shows that 50 mile radius circle centered in the downtown Sault Ste. Marie on the International Bridge. You'll see that it includes um, quite a bit of land um, in a decent amount of those waterways that I described earlier. So now I'm gonna highlight a few of the good birding locations within this circle. First one is the very well-known Whitefish Point uh, in Michigan. Um, it's very popular. Almost every birder in North America has heard of Whitefish Point. It's, uh, as you can see, this big point that extends up into Lake Superior. Here's a close-in look at the aerial photograph of Whitefish Point. It's a pretty conifer-heavy based um, forest and then has this massive sandy shore that um, attracts a lot of shorebirds. Here's just some uh, photos that I uh, pulled from Google Street View. As you can see, this is the parking lot for Whitefish Point. It also doubles as a, um, I think it's called the Great Lakes Shipwreck Museum. Um, someone might correct me if that's not the proper name, but um, given that it's on the edge of Lake Superior where there's a lot of well-known shipwrecks in the area. They have a museum dedicated to all that. And here's a look of the um, from the tip of Whitefish Point. Nice sandy beach, lots of uh, driftwood coming up on the shore. It's very photogenic. Tourists um, during the summertime come here all the time. So the number of rarities that have been found at Whitefish Point is very impressive. A lot of people say that there's a secret portal between Southeast Arizona and Whitefish Point based on uh, some of the species that have been recorded here. So, and these ones are, I might have missed a couple of the major ones. I was just quickly going through the list, but um, Fulvis Whistling Duck, Gargany, Inca Dove, Common Ground Dove, Chuck's Will Widow, Ancient Merlet, which is a, you know, an ocean seabird that uh, somehow found its way into the Great Lakes. Same with Northern Gannet, Brown Pelican, Short-tailed Hawk, which is one of the most impressive ones from Whitefish Point. Um, barn Owl, which is very rare for this far north. 
Lewis's Woodpecker, Asteroid Flycatcher, Cave Swallow, Sage Thrasher, Brewer Sparrow, Sagebrush Sparrow, Green Tail Toey, Shiny Cowbird, Lucy's Warbler, and Hepatic Tanager. So, I mean, these are like the major birds that Whitefish Point has had over the years, but every, every year they're getting, you know, rare birds during spring and fall migration. It's, it's quite impressive. If you've never been up to Whitefish Point, I definitely um, suggest that you do at some point. Obviously, once the borders back, open back up and it's safe to do so, but it's, uh, if you can make it there during migration, it's definitely worth it. They, uh, Michigan Audubon does um, hawk watches, water bird watches, owl banding, and all kinds of uh, scientific research there as well. So it's, it's a really quite happening place in spring and fall migration. So within the Sault Ste. Marie Birding Circle, there's also some other highlights on the Michigan side. One is uh, there's um, jack, a jack pine forest now that uh, Kirtland's warblers show up to in low densities right now, but um, every year they're there now. This was a picture that I took. Um, probably about only a half hour drive from the International Bridge south of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. And uh, it, was, it was pretty awesome to see uh, Kirtland's Warbler so close to home. Snowy Owls. So Red Yard, Michigan and is uh, very, very well known for the number of snowy owls that it gets in the wintertime. I believe on one Christmas bird count um, that I participated in within recent years, I think it was two in a row actually, had the most snowy owl records for Christmas bird counts for all of the United States. And I think only Amherst Island in Ontario beat them for um, North America wide for totals. There's days when you can drive down a couple of kilometer stretch of road and see, you know, a dozen snowy owls sitting up on the telephone poles, wires, and in the trees. It's uh, really neat. And at the south end of the circle, Mackinac Straits is uh, where thousands and thousands of redheads will stage. Um, during spring, fall, and even throughout the winter if there's uh, enough open water, which there usually is. Um, the Mackinac Straits are well known for their hawk watches and water bird watches as well. And they get a number of good birds migrating through there. Any hawk that gets into the lower peninsula of Michigan is basically funneled all the way up either side and then crosses at the Mackinac Straits. So they get impressive numbers of golden eagles and all the common raptors as well as some unusual ones as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So within Sault Ste. Marie on the Ontario side, the best spot probably um, based on species count and the uh, number of species that are seen each year is the Sioux Locks and Whitefish Island. Um, there's lots of trees in Sault Ste. Marie, but uh, if I was a bird and I was flying over and needed somewhere to land, I would see all the nice habitat of the locks and Whitefish Island and land there. So a lot of birds get seen here. Um, it's made up of three different islands, North St. Mary's Island, South St. Mary's Island. Both of these are owned and operated by Parks Canada. The Sault Ste. Marie Canal is a national historic site. So they maintain the trails and the buildings on this property. And then Whitefish Island is owned by Batchewana First Nation, and they also have trails throughout the island. There's um, one another reason why there's so many birds is the, just the variety of habitat types within the small area. There's, you know, not dense forest, but there's enough trees that you get all the warblers and uh, typical forest songbirds f migrating through and landing there. The at the south end there you'll see the St. Mary's Rapids, which attract um, a variety of waterfowl, tons of common golden eyes, common mergansers, mallards. Um, seems like each winter we get harlequin ducks in there as well. It's, uh, it, if it gets really cold, it might freeze over, but in typical winter, um, there's always open water for all the waterfowl. And then the open sky, and uh, as you'll see, tons of birds migrating over in the spring and fall. So here's another, here's a street view, um, which I was actually impressed that they had uh, 
street view down the paths here, but as you can see, this is the pond between South St. Mary's Island and Whitefish Island. It's a really nice wetland type habitat, lots of ducks, Canada geese um, thrive in here. And it's, besides the birds, the trails are just a really nice place to hike in general. So next is the St. Joseph Island Migratory Bird Sanctuary. This is found on the very um, southwest tip of St. Joseph Island, which is from Sault Ste. Marie, probably take you about an hour, just over an hour to drive there. Um, it's quite a ways away, but it's definitely worth it. So the St. Joseph Island Migratory Bird Sanctuary is actually the same boundaries as Fort St. Joseph National Historic Site. So the site is um, operated by Parks Canada. They have a lot of neat history going on there. Um, the Fort of St. Um, St. Joseph had a large role in the War of 1812. So if you're into history, you'll also learn quite a bit, but um, it's designated as a migratory bird sanctuary for good reason. Um, a lot of birds, they'll cross the water and seeing as this is, you know, a little um, tip out into the water, they'll land there first, kind of like a mini Point Peely or something like that. But uh, in my opinion, it's the best birding location um, within the Algoma district on the Ontario side. Um, all kinds, of, there's wetland, forest, the ruins of the fort provide some good open habitat um, for those kind of birds. And um, yeah, it's my absolute favorite place to go birding each, um, each year and a lot of birds to be found. This is a view from the ruins. So um, nice open sky. This picture doesn't do it justice, but you're pretty high up. So you get a good vantage point of uh, um, waterfowl migrating north and south during migration. And you can see there, there's um, the remains of Fort St. Joseph that are still there. And then here's the road. It's about three kilometers in from the gate to the visitor center and the ruins. And uh, this forest is habitat, either walking or biking or driving in when it's open. Um, tons of forest birds calling nonstop all throughout the day. Next is the Echo Bay area. Echo Bay is actually where I live. So I spend a lot of time here as well. It's about 10, 15 minutes east of Sault Ste. Marie. So not, a, no, um, not too far away. There's a bunch of different spots that are worth checking out. Um, oh, I see my stars have kind of moved on me here. I'm not sure what happened there, but in the top, uh, top left corner, Ojibwe Park Nature Trail. This is about a two kilometer loop that goes through some nice forest and uh, it's full of warblers right now. Highway 17B Bridge gives you a nice vantage point of both sides of the water um, to see a bunch of birds. Looney Boardwalk, it's a nice little boardwalk through some wetlands. Um, that could be a viewing platform, one of the best birding locations within the Algoma District. Um, just soars and Virginia rails and pied billed grebes, and we've actually had common gallinules, which is a pretty unusual bird for this far north, um, breeding here the last few years. Um, the sedge meadow provides this nice meadow that has, you know, if the water's high, tons of ducks. We've actually had pelicans in there pretty consistently in the last few weeks. And up in the top right, the Echo River which often is open before the big water, so a bunch of waterfowl congregates in there before they can get out into the big water. This is a little uh, view of the walkway up to the Echo Bay viewing platform. And uh, this is the start of the Looney Boardwalk. If you're unfamiliar with the giant Looney that we have here in Echo Bay, um, the artist who drew the loon on the Looney was from Echo Bay. So they have a monument here, it's a giant loony. So if you're ever coming by Echo Bay, make sure to stop and check it out, it's pretty neat. So those are like the major, major birding locations within the Sault Ste. Marie birding area, but there is a wide variety of other very good, and very popular birding locations. I've actually created a map that highlights all of the places that you can go birding. 
Um, once this presentation is done, I will copy and put a, paste a link into the chat in case you're interested in checking it out. But if you click on each of these points, it'll bring up information about that site. So this is the Pumpkin Point viewing platform. Um, as the description says, it was built by the Sioux naturalists, lots of waterfowl in the spring and fall, you know, black terns nesting around here. You can hear bitterns and soars and Virginia rails calling from the wetland. And actually uh, our only record of King Rail is from here as well. And then I linked it to the eBird hotspot in case you're check interested in checking out the entire species list. So um, not quite as impressive as the list from Whitefish Point, but we've had a number of rarities here right in Sault Ste. Marie as well, including just this past winter, Ontario's first record of glaucous winged gull was found. We've had an Ahinga, yellow-billed loon, tufted duck, king eider, rufous hummingbird, western kingbird, says Phoebe, tufted titmouse, which is actually um, pretty rare for up um, this far north. They're expanding their range slightly. They're found up until the Mackinac Straits now in Michigan and are starting to be seen in the, on the north side of the Straits in St. Ignace. So maybe it's something that we'll see more often here going forward. Northern weed ear, spotted towhee. We've had a sluggy back gull at our landfill. Um, Western tanager, summer tanager. Painted bunting, which I got to see a couple of years ago. Very pretty bird and Mississippi kite. Um, but there's also been a number of really good birds um, found on the Ontario side outside of Sault Ste. Marie as well, but within the circle. Um, black vulture, this is one I had fly over my house. Um, that was pretty, pretty cool. Um, this past spring we had a vermilion flycatcher. Um, White-winged dove, tropical kingbird. There's actually been, I think, three tropical kingbird records within the Sault Ste. Marie birding circle. One on our side, two on the Michigan side. Um, Eurasian widgeon, eared grebe, king rail, Black rail. This winter we had a black headed grosbeak over winter. Um, Bullock's oriole, that was one just this spring. Orchard oriole, tricolored heron, snowy egret, scissor tailed flycatcher, black billed magpie. There's actually been two records of black billed magpie at Whitefish Point. Plus, we have a resident black billed magpie at Echo Lake, um, just east of Sault Ste. Marie, that's been here for oh, um, eight years now. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's actually just down the road for me. So I go and check it out every year. And black crowned night heron. So in addition to the really, really rare birds that we've had in this area, um, we get a number of really cool birds with, you know, some regular, regular, regularly that um, um, people like to see. Um, Jeer falcon. We don't get them every year. But... Um, you know, most years there's one or two kicking around. This was one out West End near the airport a couple of winters ago. Sharp-tailed grouse. So this is a bird that uh, definitely does not get seen in Southern Ontario at all. And we're lucky enough though, to have a pretty good population of them that live in the agricultural fields within this area. Sometimes you can see flocks of 30, 40 of them at a time. They're uh, really quite interesting, especially when you find a lick and they're dancing around. Brewer's blackbird. This is another bird that's hard to find in Southern Ontario. I think really you only find them in the Bruce Peninsula, but again, they're found in agricultural fields east of Sault Ste. Marie. Morning warbler. This is a pretty common warbler in most um, places in Ontario, but I like mentioning it because it always fascinates me every year when I go to Point Pelee that everyone gets excited. Oh, there's a morning warbler and there's crowds um, gathered around trying to find it sulking away in the undergrowth. And uh, I've still never actually seen one there myself. I just know that in two weeks I'll go home and there'll be one singing loud atop a tree right beside my house. And then American white pelicans, actually in uh, recent years they've become much much more common during spring migration. Um, just yesterday, I had 18 of them just down the road from my house. So uh, it's been pretty cool to see these birds close to home. I see lots of them on Lake of the Woods when I go there every year, but um, 
maybe we'll get them every year going forward from now. And then in the winter time, we get lots and lots of bohemian waxwings, um, especially at uh, the Sioux Locks, Whitefish Island, where there's lots of invasive buckthorn. They can be found by the thousands there. So um, if you're interested in learning about the local birding community, the first place I would direct you to would be the Sioux Naturalists. Um, they're a naturalist club that operates on both sides of the Canada and US border. I'm not gonna go into much detail or any detail about the Sioux Naturalists because that's on the schedule for tomorrow night. So make sure to tune in if you're interested in learning about that. Um, the, the one, if you're on Facebook, I highly recommend checking out Algomagistic Birding, which is a Facebook group. Um, it's uh, www.facebook.com slash um, It's Birding. It's a very popular group. We're at almost 2,000 members now, and there's, especially during spring and fall migration, there are dozens and dozens of posts um, throughout, you know, the weekends, all kinds of beautiful bird photographs being taken. Um, it's open to anyone to post. It's not a photography group, but um, all is, the sightings are important, but there are a lot of really good photographs posted there. And uh, anyone's free to ask any kind of questions about birding in this area within this group as well. And then back here, the Kensington Conservancy, I had to give a little plug for the organization that I work for. But um, in a typical year, we offer um, guided birding outings, um, especially during migration in the St. Joseph Channel area, which is where we operate. We have hiking trails that have a wide variety of birds. And in the winter time, we, uh, we have a bunch of bird feeders up that attract lots of interesting birds, actually. So um, the Kensington Conservancy is always willing to help you out with any kind of birding information or questions or take you out birding, that kind of thing. So that's all that I have for this evening. It was a pretty quick rundown on birding within the Sault Ste. Marie area. Um, if you have any questions, definitely um, reach out to me at any point. Um, this is a tropical kingbird that was seen uh, near Thessalon, found by Coney Ward last, last fall. So thank you and uh, I'll exit out of here now. So if there's any questions, uh, I'm We'll open it up now and I'll try my best to answer them. Carter, there is a question. Um, actually, there's a couple. The first question is, which birds are in Sault Ste. Marie that are not in Toronto? Not in Toronto. So yeah, I covered a couple of those. Um, Sharp-tailed grouse is definitely one. They're, they're hard to find, like, I see them often enough throughout the year, but um, they're hit, very hit and miss. Like if I was to go right now and start, okay, I'm gonna go find a sharp-tailed grouse, I would probably be unsuccessful. It just happens that I drive through suitable habitat often enough that I see them. But they're definitely around. Um, and a lot of birders, when they come up from Southern Ontario, that's one of the birds that they're looking for. Other one I mentioned is Brewer's Blackbird. Um, you know, not the, you know, they're pretty plain looking, but they got a pretty interesting song more of like a screech type thing. And if you haven't seen one, um, I definitely recommend looking for one at least once. Um, where we are, we do see some boreal species like blackback woodpecker, boreal chickadee, Canada jay. Um, we're a little too far south to see them regularly, but in the wintertime, sometimes they'll come a little further south than usual and we'll get to see them. But those are birds definitely don't see in Toronto. Um, so next question, um, how often are Connecticut warblers seen in Sault Ste. Marie? Um, not too often. The, um, the suitable breeding habitat for Connecticut warblers is a little, you kind of have to go uh, a couple hours north of town, like kind of Wawa, White River area to, you know, have a really good chance at hearing them. There's in Sault Ste. Marie during migration, a couple of them get recorded each year maybe. But yeah, like it's been a couple of years since I've seen one locally now. So if let's say for next year's festival, would they be on territory um, at this on this weekend? So like if we want to drive a couple of hours north, we could um, uh territory? 
I think so. Yeah, I've never actually gone looking for them this time of the year myself. So I don't have any actual advice on the best places to go. But yeah, they, sh they should be there now. That would be uh, pretty amazing to yeah. many of us to be, on a, <laughs> to be able to be in a Connecticut warbler territory. I don't think in territory there are still as accessible as morning warblers on territory though. <laughs> no, no, definitely not, definitely not. Okay, so a few other questions. Um, so Leona asks whether there's any accessible birding to St. Marie area. Um, yeah, there's um, the hub trail is a nice flat, well, not totally flat, but nice paved trail about 30 kilometers long that goes through um, all throughout Sault Ste. Marie along the water through Fort Creek Conservation Area. Um, so there are some hills um, that could be an issue, but it's, um, it's a spot that um, anyone with mobility issues could um, for parts of it definitely access. A lot of the good birding locations too are just along roads. So it's easy enough to um, drive down a road roll down your window and park and uh, listen and watch for birds. Um, yeah, some of the good birdling locations unfortunately aren't accessible, just the nature of the trails, but there are, there are, there are some spots for sure. Well, we'll definitely have to work on that for our festival next year. Yeah. A few more questions. Um, this is from Violet uh, Carter. Do you happen to know if the gates of the fort are now, now open? Um, not typically, they don't open till June 1st, and based on the schedule this year, they're typically in June, they're closed, um, Mondays and Tuesdays, so maybe not till June 2nd, but I honestly don't know. I think Jerry, who works there, is actually in this presentation right now, she'll know best, so I can, uh, Violet, I'll connect you with Jerry, and she can answer for you. Oh, she just wrote in the chat that... W so for Wednesday, I think the gate opens. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. A couple of last questions um, okay. before we move on to Andres, our next speaker. So for people who are um, going to make a trip to Sault Ste. Marie, a um, couple of questions. When is the best time to visit? And you can define best as you see fit. <laughs> and then where can one stay visiting? Um, in terms of species diversity, we're looking at the third week of May. Um, that's probably the best time if you're looking to see a lot of birds. But typically, the second half of September um, throughout October can be really, really good as well. Bugs are gone. Um, it's not super hot and the birds are returning. That can be a really exciting time too. What was the second question? Where to stay? Yes, where to stay. Where to stay. Um, it's a good question. I haven't had to think about that too much. Um, unfortunately, there's no um, provincial parks or anything right um, in the Sault Ste. Marie area. There's Pancake Bay and Eagle and Lake Superior Provincial Park just north of Sault Ste. Marie, hour, hour and a half. There's some private campgrounds around that I've never stayed at, so I'm not sure how well they are. There's obviously a um, variety of hotels and motels right in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, but yeah, there's definitely options. There's definitely options of places to stay. Mm -hmm. um, question for me, <laughs> I have friends in Michigan. Is it pretty easy to drive to Whitefish Point or how do you get there? Yeah, so um, from Sault Ste. Marie itself, once you get across customs, it's about an hour and 15 minute drive pretty easy drive. It's like three straight roads, mm -hmm. drive south for a bit and then west and then north. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy to get to, except maybe in the winter time might not be, a, <laughs> if it's swing or something, it might be pretty bad. I know those highways in Michigan um, can be pretty brutal, but um, no, it's a pretty easy drive to get there. Okay. Um, and last question, which everybody is wondering who's not there. What are the bugs like right now? Are there a ton of bugs? Well, there were, and then it became really cold the last two days, so they've all disappeared. <laughs> but um, yeah, from now going forward, the bugs are going to be pretty bad, which nothing we can do about that. <laughs> 
And it, I'm assuming it's black flies and mosquitoes? Black flies and mosquitoes and ticks, lots of ticks now too. Yeah. Okay. Growing up, we never had ticks. Oh, great. <laughs> but now like I can go out birding for a day and get like a dozen on me and it doesn't even phase me anymore. <laughs> Are they the kind that carry Lyme disease or? No, no, just dog ticks. Are they the other kind? Just dog ticks. Okay. Oh, no, Andres. <laughs> Andres. Yeah, and moose. Tell me bears. there are no bears. <laughs> there, there are bears. There are bears. Lots of bears. And we do have the occasional moose too, so. They... <laughs> <laughs> I I wouldn't mind seeing a bear. There are are, are they aggressive? Are they habituated I've, to people? I've no, I see lots of bears, but I've still never even come across one while out in the bush. So they probably hear me coming and disappear. So, okay, yeah. okay, well, okay. So, well, I think um, we should close this off. Um, yeah. So personally, I cannot. Oh, someone in the chat has seen six bears this week. <laughs> there's, there's just something about you. You're a bear repellent. <laughs> uh, so personally Carter you have made Sault Ste. Marie sound like a paradise and a really interesting I cannot wait to visit next year and I'm, I'm sure everybody who's been part of this because uh, also can't wait to come as well uh, sounds like any time of year would be great quite honestly even the winter and I'm not a winter lover but lots of great birds lots of great things to see and do yeah and Probably best of all the people, right? <laughs> right, that's right. Okay, so thank you. Um, and now we'll move on to our next speaker.